Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of Dateline SAU, where you can catch all of the latest news and sports from St. Ambrose University. I'm Nick Vlossen. And I'm Mitch Woodmeyer. It's not every day you see a group of guys wearing heels on campus, but that's exactly what happened Wednesday on the Lee Loman Arena indoor track. Men suffered the pain of walking an entire mile in high heels, flats, and brightly decorated flip-flops, all for a cause. Kelly Steiner tells us why men traded in their tennis shoes for stilettos. From black boots to glitchy gold heels, over 50 men from around the community literally walked a mile in a woman's shoes on Wednesday to raise awareness about sexual assaults. Yeah, feet are tired. Uh, you know, I think it, it just, you know, it's that awareness that, you know, I see high heels every day. I just don't happen to wear them. And so uh, to be in those and to try and uh, understand what it must take to get conditioned to wear those, uh, let alone to feel like I should. Uh, I think it's, again, it makes me think twice, uh, certainly as a father of daughters. 18 volunteers from SAT, or Sexual Assault Awareness Team, cheered the men on as they made 11 laps around the track feeling the burning of their calves after a couple of rounds. Um, I think it's important because, especially being on a small campus, people don't realize that it happens here, and it really does. And I think it also gets guys to aware that it happens too, and for them to show support like this, it really means a lot to us girls. It's the third year Walk a Mile in Her Shoes has been held at St. Ambrose, but this year it was forced inside because of heavy rain. We like to have it outside because then when people are like walking to classes or just walking around, they would be like, oh, what's going on? The dreary day didn't keep men from showing their support. I think as important uh, for us as men uh, to be in a position where we're uncomfortable or when we're asked to do something that seems out of the norm, uh, it, makes us, it helps us to think more deeply about the issues in front of us. Kelly Steiner, Dateline SAU. St. Ambrose University's Tom's Club asked the campus to take part in another worldwide event, A Day Without Shoes. Students faced some, challenging, some challenges taking part in this event, and Dateline SAU Shelby Shepard has more. Low of 34, high of 56. These were the temperatures SAU students faced on a day they were asked to go without shoes. The cold was a factor which made it difficult for students to participate in this worldwide event to raise awareness for those who cannot afford shoes. I had a ton of just texts and emails saying like I would have but you know it was too cold, I had to walk a really long way, you know things like that. The cold was only one factor which made the event difficult to participate in. It was really cold and kind of hurt sometimes and there were a lot of restrictions on campus like with the weight room and the calf. Those restrictions required students to wear shoes in those places as well as in the Rogalski Center food court and the lab classrooms. There was, however, one place students were not permitted unless barefoot. At 9 p.m., Tom's Club held a concert for the campus. I think tonight is actually just to celebrate, just to be fun, just to get people involved, so let them know what's going on. The concert included sets from two SAU student bands. Reason for Now and Dan and Friends, as well as a solo act from student Molly Conrad. All performers were, of course, without shoes. This is the third year the event has been held on the St. Ambrose campus. Every year since we started, so this is the third year, and we, I, me and my co-president graduate this May, so we have presidents lined up to keep this club going, so hopefully it'll continue on in the future. Tischler hopes the event will continue to raise awareness here on the SAU campus for years to come. Shelby Shepard, Dateline SAU. The Morrissey Gallery and the Galvin Fine Arts Center is showcasing a collection of works entitled Taking Bearings Portfolio. The Portfolio Exchange is the trading of printmaking artwork across the country. The exchange begins by the organizer of the exchange drawing up a theme. Then other printmakers across the country are invited to design their own artwork based off of the original design. The Portfolio Exchange features printmaking artist Dana Peters, Olivia Timmon, and 13 other artists from across the country. The artwork will be on display in the Morrissey Gallery through June 14th. It's National Library Week, a nationwide event that is celebrated every year. Its purpose is to draw attention to libraries and the importance of those libraries in their communities. Our community is the faculty, staff, and students on our campus. And so our uh, purpose with National Library Week is to um, give people an opportunity to 
come and see the library maybe more in a fun environment instead of studying all the time, but to see all the services that we provide. The shows for next year's St. Ambrose Theater season have been announced. The first show of the year is unknown for now, but it will be a musical co-directed by SAU theater professor Dan Raiden Hale and guest director Bill Tyson. Other productions selected include 101 Dalmatians, The Laramie Project, and The Importance of Being Earnest. New York City String Quartet Ensemble Ethel performed on campus last Friday, but not in the normal classical setting. Event planners moved the group to the Rogalski Center Ballroom because the auditorium stage had been set up for the spring musical, Chicago. Ethel performed their music in a cabaret-style setting. A cash bar, tableside seating, and complimentary refreshments made for a more casual event. We, we thought that the cabaret style would really work with the changing demographics right now. Uh, you know, people like to see something a little bit different. Uh, this seemed to be a fresher approach in offering classical music, um, especially to, um, you know, uh, younger adults. Ethel was in the Quad City area for one week giving educational concerts for local schools. On April 18th, local high school and community college students were encouraged to attend the Exploring Engineering Day held in the Rogalski Center. This was a day for the students to spend time and ask questions to professionals in the engineering world. St. Ambrose University offers Bachelor of Science degrees in Industrial and Mechanical Engineering with a dual degree option. The SAU community recently had an opportunity to learn about the art of fine dining and networking. Tim Longini has more on this year's Etiquette Dinner. The SAU Career Center invites students and faculty to come together for an evening of fine dining. The evening began with attendees practicing how to build relationships through networking with local Quad Cities professionals. Skills that were taught include how to shake hands and how to maintain relationships that they have established. Later that night, participants took part in a four-course meal served to them by Sodexo. Sodexo did a great job bringing out some of their finer quality foods. I was impressed with the uh, type of foods that they actually had to offer. It was very scrumptious. During the meal, diners learned about proper eating techniques and how to treat their business guests. Each course is broken down to learn the right silver to use and how to properly eat each course. Uh, the food was really, really good. A nice change up from what the cafeteria usually serves us. Uh, it's nice to actually have some good food without having to cook it. Each table is also given scenarios to consider and discuss with one another about common situations that can occur during a future business day. <laughs> Growing up and starting to get into the business environment, you'll go out to business dinners with clients or your boss or something like that, and you'll know how to act in those type of so social situations. So it gives you kind of an edge over the people that don't know how. After dessert, a select group of diners had a piece of paper hidden under their chair which gave them a prize. Prizes included books and gift cards. Tim Longini, Dateline, SAU. Coming up in sports, the SAU dance team is back from Florida and the national championships. We'll let you know how they did in their defense of last year's national title. And the SAU rugby club, with teammates from Augustana College, kicks off the start to its new season. Sean Nolan has all the scores and highlights coming up after this short break. Stay tuned. couldn't have asked for anything more. I was you know, on the air three weeks into my college experience and I think that that kind of thing and showing the trust that you know everyone believed what I could do and everyone was always there to help me out and it, it really just paved the way for what my four years would be. It's a great department, a lot of great things go on and it, you get out of it what you put in. If you put in the hard work, if you show that you want to learn a lot, you're going to, and the sky's the limit in what you can do. St. Ambrose is an amazing place. From all the teachers that are involved in whichever field you want to go into, whether it be communications or anything else, everyone around here really wants you to be successful, and, I, and it, it's just a great place that you can get involved in so many different things, meet great people, have a great experience, and hopefully when you finish those four years, you look back and have as positive a thought about it as I do. Everything just really had a big impact on who I became when I left St. Ambrose. The 
St. Ambrose men's volleyball team traveled to Denver, Colorado this week for the NAIA National Tournament. They opened up the tournament playing against the number two seed, Concordia, out of California. The Bees lost all three sets to the Eagles in the first round of pool play. Kyle Schwetz led the way in the loss. Earlier, he was named an All-American for the third straight year. The senior middle blocker from Carroll Stream, Illinois, is just the sixth St. Ambrose student athlete to earn at least three All-American awards. We'll tell you how the Bees fared in the rest of the national tournament in the next week's sports, sportscast. The St. Ambrose Fighting Bee baseball team traveled to Oskaloosa on, the, on April 13th for a two-day, four-game series against William Penn. The Bees started the series with a 5-1 win. Shortstop Adonis Brown went 2-4 for four with three RBIs, earning him Conference Player of the Week honors. Bee pitcher Zach Rolf threw a complete game victory. He was named Conference Pitcher of the Week for the second week in a row for his efforts. William Penn took the second game 4-0. But the Bees dominated the third game of the series, led by right fielder Matt Rosenberger, who went 3-for-3 three three with three RBIs. William Penn helped the Bees by committing seven errors. The Statesman tied the series at 2-2 two two by winning the fourth game 14-13 in extra innings. On Tuesday, the team traveled to Cedar Rapids for a doubleheader against Mount Mercy. The Mustangs would take both games as the Bees fall to 6-8 in the conference, 9-21 overall putting them fifth place in the MCC. Their game for the 17th was rained out, the seventh SAU baseball game this season that has been postponed due to weather. The Queen Bee softball team faced off against Grandview for a doubleheader on the 13th in Des Moines. St. Ambrose won both games for their 20th and 21st victories and their first two conference wins of the season. First baseman Chris and Paulson finished the doubleheader 3-for-5 with three RBIs and two home runs. Despite having the best overall record in the MCC, the Queen Bees are only 2-4 in the conference, good for fourth place. Their games versus Clark and William Penn were rained out, also giving them seven games on the year postponed due to weather. The St. Ambrose dance team traveled to Daytona Beach, Florida in an attempt to capture their second straight national title. The Queen Bees fell just short, coming in second place behind Oklahoma City University. They also competed in Division II hip-hop category, where they finished fifth in a field of 18 teams, the largest category in nationals. Congratulations to the SAU dance team on another great year. The St. Ambrose golf teams managed to get into some action last weekend. The men's team finished ninth in a 20-team field at the Augustana Invitational. Luke Stott and Brian Crabel led the Bees, tying for 28th place individually. The women play 7th out of 11, 11 teams at the Mount Mercy Spring Invitational. Ellen Turner paced SAU, tying for 5th place individually in the event. Although they are usually rivals, St. Ambrose and Augustana have come together to form a rugby club. And on the 13th, St. Ambrose hosted their first ever club rugby match at Timmerman Field. With a large crowd watching, the combined team faced off against Wartburg College and the Knights didn't stand a chance. The combination of Augie and Ambrose was way too much for Wartburg. They ran all over the Knights in a convincing 31-14 win. The St. Ambrose men's and women's tennis teams participated in a pair of duels at Assumption High School on April 13th and split them. Both teams dropped 9 to nothing decisions in their first match to the Ashford Saints. In their second match against the Grandview Vikings, the men's team won in a 5-4 decision. Santiago Gonzalez, Luke Wood, and John Rolfe all won both their singles and doubles matches. The women's team also had success as they blinked the Vikings 9-0. And that will do it for this week in sports. I'm Sean Nolan. Thanks, Sean, and that will do it for this week's edition of Dateline SAU. Be sure to join us every Friday and Monday evening at 6.30 for the latest news and sports from St. Ambrose University. With all the rain this week, we asked SAU students about their favorite rainy day activities. Here's what they had to say. Thanks for watching. Good night. My favorite rainy day activity is probably watching the Dark Knight trilogy while sitting on the futon and taking a nap here and there. On rainy days like this, I like to find the largest hill I can and slip and slide all the way down.
My favorite rainy activity is probably to lay on my couch or in my bed and listen to the rain and thunder and just relax. My favorite rainy day activity is going for a drive and splashing my car through all the puddles. I love to lay in bed and watch Dawson's Creek. On rainy days, I like to skip class and stay in bed.